Welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today what we are going to look at is hover styling in Material UI. And I've got four examples of it here, hovering on the box, the button, the paper, and the text field. Now the first three of these are really quite simple in terms of syntax. Once you see it once, then you'll be able to repeat it with most components. Um, and the reason that it's a simple syntax for hover on the first three is because they render relatively simply in the DOM. So the box here we see is just rendering as a div with this MUI box root class on it. The button, its root is just a button element with MUI button root. The paper component is rendering as a div with MUI paper dash root. So when we apply the uh, hover styling, we can just target the hover pseudo class. And um, the text field on the other hand is a little bit more challenging. So the root of the text field is this MUI form control component. It's also got an input label in it, and there's an actual inco input component somewhere in there. So we have to use a nested selector that targets the right, uh, the right class so that we actually see that hover styling. So if you want to learn all there is about hover, then stick around. I've got some code in place here already to save some time. What I have is we saw those four components in the intro, and I just have them here, the box, the button, the paper, and the text field. They are wrapped in a stack component that has a column flex direction on it and a little bit of spacing. So really nothing too exciting. Um, for the most part, I've already added the SX prop and passed in a styling object. But for the box, I am going to show exactly how to do that just in case anyone's not familiar with it. So to pass in an object for styling, then we do something like this. We create a const and name it. Um, in this case, I'll name it button SX and I'll say that is equal to an object. And I'll just take this and pass it to the boxes SX prop, just like that. So let's see what this is all rendering as. Okay, so now we've got, um, we're kind of all on the same page. We've got our four components here that we saw from the intro, but there's a little bit of default styling on the button. You can see that when there's a hover on it, then there's already some kind of effect. Same with the text field, that is just default styling. I have not added anything um, to make that happen. So the box and the paper aren't doing anything. Going back over to our code, we'll just run through these four examples. So with the box, as I showed in the DOM, um, it is just rendering as a single div and our SX prop is apply applying whatever it, styling is in this box styling at that root level. I mean, there is only one level, so of course it's being applied there. And so what that means is if we want to add hover styling, then we can use the the um, pseudo class hover, and there's no space between the ampersand and the colon because that hover is being applied to the root div. So um, that root div is the element in the DOM that's getting the hover pseudo class applied to it by the browser. And uh, so this is exactly what we want to target. Kind of saying that in a couple different ways just to make sure everyone understands. But anyway, I'm gonna pass in a border of let's say one PX solid. And I'll give it this color here. And let's do just a little bit more. Let's say change the entire color to gray. And that'll be the text color and I'll change the background color to a light blue. And just to differentiate the box from the background a little bit, then not even in the hover, but just in general, I'm going to apply a box shadow and I'll say three. So this three is a value from the default theme. I have not added any themes here or anything like that. However, MUI by default has a theme that has a bunch of values on it. And this three for box shadow will translate into a certain box shadow value. So you can see that now there's some box shadow applied. And just like that, we have the hover styling that we expected to see. So pretty cool there. Now let's move on to our button. And the button is going to be similar in that uh, we put in that ampersand. You'll always have an ampersand anytime you're doing a nested selector. And there's no space. I'm gonna just have that colon right away and get my hover in there. For the button, I'll just add, I'll just change the border color. So we saw that it's at least getting some kind of fill on it. 
Um, I don't remember if the button, if the border was maybe lightening a little bit, but wouldn't surprise me if that was the default behavior. Um, but anyway, I'll add an RGBA of, let's say, 255, 240, 10, and an opacity of 0.8. Take a look at that. There we go. So we can see that's kind of a yellow styling on that border there. Pretty cool. So far, so good. And onto the paper component. And once again, another simple example where we just have ampersand hover. And um, we'll say with our paper, we'll increase the box shadow. That'd be kind of cool. To eight. So it's already got box shadow. I'm not hovering yet. I go and hover, and you can see that box shadow animate to a darker, more pronounced box shadow pretty significantly. So pretty cool. As a reminder, with all of my videos, I do have a link to full code in the video details. So check that out, expand that, and you'll see a link to a post where I have full code for this. And also, I actually have recently released my very first Udemy course, uh, and it's on Material UI. So if you are really interested in being an expert at Material UI component styling, then it is an advanced course for that. However, it also builds an app all the way from beginning to end. So even if you're newer to MUI and looking for how to build a, an app from beginning to end and then add advanced styling to it, then definitely check out my course. And um, if possible, then there is a coupon in the video details, but some those coupons expire and I can't always have one. So at the very least, I'll have a link to my course. Moving on to our last component here, and it is a more complex component. It's this text field. And just a reminder, I've got this object here already passed to our SX value. So let's take a look at the DOM for a minute for our text field. So I have this form control root, and that's the root component, or the root element, I should say. Um, both are true, really, of our text field. This label, we've got this outlined input root, so one interesting thing that we need to pursue is figuring out where exactly the, the border color is currently applied when I hover. So I haven't seen any border color yet on any of those components, but here we go. Here's one. So I'm going to set a hover on this field set and see what happens. So that didn't do anything, so that's kind of interesting. Let me set the hover on here. So we can see now that our hover is in fact applied. And let's see if we can look at the DOM here. Okay, this is really interesting. So our field set, I haven't added any styling yet to our text field. And yet I see this exact selector that we need. Um, I see the input base dash root, or we could use MUI outlined input dash root. When that is hovered, then um, there's this notched outline class also so they're getting a very specific selector that's probably more specific than we need. I'm just going to say um, MUI outlined input dash root colon hover. And then I'm just going to directly target the text field element. So let's see if we can translate that over here to our styling. So I've got my colon. Um, I'll go ahead and no, actually, I'll, I'll do it the right way the first time. So um, what I was debating was I know that this outlined input root is a child of the text field root. Remember, our text field root is that form control. So if I don't have the space, then this is looking for a class at the root level. But if I do have this space here, which we want, now it's looking for a class on some child component. And it's saying when that is hovered, um, then do a thing. Do whatever we say in here. Maybe we say background color orange inside of here. However, I'm pretty sure we'll want to target that field set. But let's just see what's going on with this. Oops, I targeted background color. I meant border color. There we go. Let's see what that does. Okay, so nothing yet. Background color was easy. Border color is apparently harder. So let's try targeting that field set. So we'll say Inside of our MUI outlined input dash root hover nested selector, we're going to have another nested selector. And I'll say field set. Now let's move this border color inside there. 
All right, there we go. We did it. So pretty interesting and pretty challenging to get the right, um, the right value on there, the right nested selector, I should say. Um, so this fourth SX hover example is definitely the most challenging. Um, there's not that many components in MUI that have that level of complexity or that level of composition, but there are some. So definitely exploring the DOM and not being afraid of the DOM and just taking a look at the two tools you have for creating nested selectors. The classes on the elements in the DOM and the elements themselves, the type of elements. So if this video is, was useful for you, then um, please do consider subscribing. And I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day.